Well, good morning, good afternoon, or uh, good evening, depending on uh, where you are. My name is uh, Naresha, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the groovy way of uh, testing uh, with uh, Spock. So it is always a pleasure uh, to speak at uh, ApacheCon. And uh, interestingly, of the last 15 years, if I have to uh, think about uh, the kind of influence open source software uh, had on our work. Uh, that's uh, really, really, you know, uh, immersed and uh, especially from the, you know, Apache license and Apache uh, community tools, I think uh, they had profound uh, impact on the productivity of developers. With uh, that, uh, my name is uh, Naresha and I help uh, teams to get uh, better at how they use uh, technology to solve their uh, business problem. And uh, I'm also the founder uh, of uh, Bangalore uh, Groovy User uh, Group. With that, uh, let's uh, get uh, started. Let me quickly start uh, by talking about, uh, you know, uh, why this uh, talk. So I think it's in around uh, 2010, 2011 times I started uh, playing with uh, Groovy and uh, 2012 onwards, uh, I started uh, developing and uh, running applications uh, you know in uh, i mean groovy applications in the productions so at uh, that time uh, i started uh, using uh, spock uh, interestingly i did not have to convince anyone uh, to use uh, uh, spock or uh, groovy stack technologies uh, i had the freedom to select uh, this uh, tech stack which I really enjoyed uh, using, uh, which happened for a period of time. And uh, later on, when I had to, you know, go to other teams and uh, when I recommended uh, them to use uh, Groovy Stack or uh, Spock specifically in this context, what happened is obviously I couldn't just say that, oh, I loved uh, working with uh, Spock. That's why you should use that. Obviously, people wouldn't uh, mind hearing that in the beginning. Uh, but definitely I had to give uh, more data points why Spock is a great framework for uh, writing your test cases. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, over a period of time, I had uh, started, uh, you know, putting up uh, thoughts and uh, uh, had discussed this with the several teams, why they could use uh, Spock and get, uh, you know, uh, develop, a develop productivity benefits and uh, that that's how i think most of uh, uh, this uh, talk uh, came into existence though they were like in uh, bits and pieces so uh, you know across not not in the exact uh, uh, presentation format uh, as such so i'm going to uh, present some 10 uh, points not that uh, i'm going to cover uh, all the points comprehensively uh, but some important points that can uh, make a real difference or uh, something that, that can make you thinking is uh, what I uh, intend to present here. So if at all uh, it happened to help you in, uh, you know, convincing others to make use of Spock or uh, deciding for yourself or at least uh, getting a few parameters that could uh, help you decide, uh, then I think that, that I would be really happy about that. So let's uh, start with the first one, which is, uh, you know, intention uh, conveying code is a really, really important uh, part. And let's uh, start by taking a look at uh, uh, this uh, JUnit code, which is uh, written in uh, Java. And uh, usually we want to convey what, uh, you know, the test case uh, does. Uh, since uh, you are constrained how you name uh, your uh, methods, uh, usually, you know, you might end up uh, using uh, like, okay, some uh, method name and you could make use of uh, uh, the display name annotation uh, from uh, JUnit 5. Of course, there are, uh, there are a bunch of strategies you could uh, derive this uh, by, you know, uh, putting the spaces in between. You don't have to provide the display name as it is. You could just supply the strategy. But this is one of the example, uh, uh, I mean, you, you couldn't really, you know, uh, give a proper sentence as uh, uh, method name. Uh, the reason why this uh, could matter is here, uh, you, you, you are seeing the four rules of uh, simple design proposed by Ken Beck at the top uh, for you see passes the test for uh, production code, but then, uh, you know, for our test code, it says that uh, it does the testing properly, you know, 
gives uh, you know it gives feedback about uh, the code if it uh, is written correctly uh, let's take that as the you know prior first priority the next level you see that uh, reveals intention and uh, no duplication are uh, kind of having uh, the same priority and they do have uh, uh, interplay we will not go in detail into them uh, but then what you say is that along with the reveals intention if uh, if we could uh, reduce the duplication uh, then that would be a great idea so that's what exactly spark uh, uh, does and has been doing for a long time you know uh, in this case uh, i could just supply the you know the actual uh, one sentence description of the test case as the uh, method name uh, without uh, you know providing anything extra so this this is uh, in fact uh, you know the most concise and clear way of uh, conveying what the test case uh, does with that let's move on to the you know uh, second end probably one of the most uh, important uh, uh, value of uh, you know uh, spark is uh, ability to write uh, test cases in uh, bdd style right so that's uh, typically would uh, use uh, given when then uh, style uh, interestingly working uh, with several teams over several projects uh, one thing i really realized that you know when people uh, intentionally started using uh, this format given when then they started thinking about okay what is the you know precondition and what is the test execution step and what is the post condition uh, with with clearly or deliberately thinking about uh, these three elements uh, they could really improve the way they write the test cases uh, and uh, uh, people could write uh, test cases that are uh, much more uh, readable uh, than otherwise uh, and uh, typically you know they might have used uh, tools like uh, i mean they might have used the gherkin syntax with uh, with uh, tools like uh, cucumber and uh, there were a bunch of other teams who also thought uh, they might uh, get uh, benefited uh, you know from this but they were more like uh, not a real business facing uh, applications uh, more of a sort of a, a technical apis uh, and uh, you know we started uh, using uh, spark uh, there where it provides uh, the same thinking uh, without uh, you know the extra overhead of uh, you know mapping your uh, feature files to you know java classes etc but then that structure is uh, available there making it very clear what's precondition what's the execution step and uh, you know what is uh, uh, post condition that that you know adds uh, a lot lot of value and these thinking tools are very very useful uh, at the same time i would uh, like to refer to the one of the other popular uh, you know the thinking structure uh, for uh, use cases uh, you know all of you might have used you know as uh, some user uh, you know uh, i want to do some action so that i can achieve some value uh, which has been uh, most uh, misused or abused uh, because you know uh, instead of uh, it's it's more importantly a thinking tool but instead of using that people uh, started uh, complying to the uh, structure by putting like uh, as a front end developer i want to call the back end so that i can do something etc with with uh, you know no focus on thinking and just for on compliance that's not going to add uh, you know value the the biggest value is uh, the kind of uh, in terms of uh, thinking and in, in terms of the structure when you are reading right so let's uh, take a look at uh, you know one of the examples uh, where you have uh, you know uh, I am uh, reading from a uh, file, creating a stream. Then I am, uh, you know, storing in a S3 bucket. Finally, I am checking if uh, that is available in the bucket. Maybe just a sample case. And uh, interestingly, uh, the structure also can be extended with uh, multiple. Uh, I mean, after uh, when and then, uh, I could use multiple when and then. Uh, these become uh, more important when you are uh, writing uh, journey tests. In a typical unit test, you may not uh, make use of uh, this pattern much. A single given when then would suffice. Uh, but in a you know a typical user journey test, when you write, uh, you might have uh, you know uh, it, uh, you know the journey continues with the more test condition, uh, test execution and uh, post condition uh, steps. So most of the tools uh, do support uh, this uh, structure. Uh, so as uh, Spock, uh, and we do have one more uh, provision which I'll talk in uh, you know, one of the later sessions, I mean, later section of this session. Let's move on to power asserts. 
So if you look at uh, here, I'm going to uh, assert, uh, you know, on a list, actually, uh, if I'm expecting uh, 246, but uh, currently they have uh, 226 and uh, you would uh, see that uh, you get the error uh, uh, that uh, condition is not satisfied and uh, the what, what is the difference? I have more examples on this. Uh, but interestingly, this directly comes uh, from uh, the Groovy language and uh, we are not using, I mean, I mean the, there is no additional uh, tools on uh, top of uh, this. So I think, uh, you know, Groovy has uh, the power assert uh, package, I think, uh, or Codehouse uh, Groovy runtime uh, power assert. And I think there is uh, assertion renderer or something like that, which uh, takes care of this. Uh, in the absence of uh, this, what happens is, uh, you know, one of one, uh, I mean, the most important uh, part here is uh, just by looking at uh, the error message, you should be able to figure out, uh, you know, why exactly the test case uh, failed. A uh, couple of points uh, around uh, the challenges uh, developer face while doing this. Uh, in in JUnit, you would uh, see that it comes with a bunch of uh, assert equals. Uh, and uh, usually you would have you would have the you know the structure like expected uh, value uh, followed by the actual value then you can pass some uh, message as well so usually people just end up using uh, you know uh, the assert equals expected and uh, actuals and uh, interestingly you know in uh, another framework uh, test ng it happens to be in the other order uh, wherein uh, people I mean, you need to supply the actual first. So if people have used one of those uh, tools, so moving to the other can be a little bit of uh, confusing. Uh, and uh, error message is mostly not uh, descriptive uh, enough. So that's why I think, uh, you know, right from uh, my initial few years, uh, I stopped using uh, the assertions provided by JUnit uh, those days uh, you know, when I was using JUnit. And uh, you, 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 I mean, uh, I started using handpress matches those days, and uh, later on, uh, assert J provides uh, you know a good uh, descriptive message if you if you want to just uh, you know stick to Java. Uh, however, here uh, you know uh, uh, Spock take, takes advantage of the you know uh, Groovy languages feature uh, power assert. So let's see a few more uh, examples. In this case, uh, I could check if uh, you know some value is uh, in that condition so that says uh, it falls and uh, if i want to check multiple conditions at the same time don't just uh, fail at the you know first uh, assertion failure i could uh, supply uh, you know verify all and uh, say what uh, i mean instruct us for that uh, okay now go and uh, verify all the assertions uh, supplied in the closure Similarly, another uh, common requirement uh, would be like uh, you extract uh, some part of the structure and, uh, you know, you, in this case, I'm just uh, extracting the last name and uh, I'm uh, asserting on that. Uh, so if you're using uh, assert J, you know, you, you might do extracting last name and then uh, contains, uh, contains exactly all those uh, uh, functions uh, can be used. Uh, an important uh, distinction I would like to make here by you know, comparing it to typical uh, object-oriented uh, languages uh, and uh, functional languages uh, like, you know, uh, in most of the object-oriented languages, you would end up defining a structure and for th those structure, you would uh, define a very specific method how to work with that. Whereas mostly the functional, uh, you know, languages, what uh, they do is like, uh, you know, they usually operate with the list and map. So you, you might have your structure list of map of, you know, which contains some list and uh, some other some other items uh, you know, across different keys. So using very, very generic structure, very few data structures, uh, you're able to, you know, uh, write uh, uh, entire, I mean, manage operations on your multiple data structures. Uh, of course, they have their own uh, challenges uh, in terms of, uh, you know, readability, ability to understand the structure as well. Uh, but the whole point is like, you know, one is uh, with very few, uh, very few, uh, you know, uh, basic components, you build up uh, your applications or, you know, whatever uh, component you want to build uh, versus using a lot of very specialized uh, components. So in this case, if you compare uh, the assert J or, uh, you know, the hand-press approach, uh, you would uh, you'd be doing you know very specific uh, you know 
uh, matters uh, or you know assertions for very specific types you might do that whereas here you can give any any lang any you know uh, any syntax that is valid in groovy language uh, here so that's a kind of uh, has a very very small learning curve and people can get really productive with it Uh, but yeah, at at moment uh, it can be a little bit uh, you know uh, challenging, and there are a few cases where you might uh, find uh, you know the search approach uh, uh, slightly better. In this case, uh, you know you say that uh, it failed, but uh, it's, for example, uh, one of the item was uh, present here and another item was not present. Uh, I think uh, you know that case uh, a search J would uh, give slightly better uh, you know messages. The point is, yeah, conveying uh, you know uh, the exact uh, failure messages is uh, very important, uh, and uh, thinking on that can lead to a lot of uh, good test cases. Let's move on to the next item, which is the data-driven uh, testing. So let let me directly start uh, with an example. Uh, in this case, you know, I'm just checking if uh, you know, the sum is equal to s for uh, the expectation and uh, through the where clause, uh, you would see that uh, I'm able to supply what is the value of A, what is the value of B, and what is the expected sum. Uh, so this has uh, two benefits. Uh, first is, uh, you know, uh, whatever we are trying to do, uh, you know, from the readability perspective, we are uh, conveying our intentions uh, very, very clearly. And uh, the second advantage goes back to the, you know, fourth uh, uh, rule, which is having, uh, you know, uh, fewer elements uh, as fewer elements as possible. Uh, that way, you know, uh, you are you, you don't end up really duplicating the uh, code uh, where in, in where in within your method just the data changes, right? You, usually, however, uh, you know, practically when you do uh, when you write test cases with the test driven test driven development approach, uh, you might uh, end up doing uh, you know one test case and one more test case, and at that moment you might realize that you know now okay now i see there is a similarity between these two test cases uh, and uh, why not i go and uh, convert uh, this to a you know uh, a data driven or you know data table kind of uh, test so uh, we might i might not do it uh, the, at the second so usually you know uh, rule of 3 can be com can come in very handy here and you could uh, at that moment you can convert it to a data table which, which is uh, you know most uh, practical approach uh, what i use most of the time let's move on to the next one that is uh, the ordered uh, execution of tests uh, again uh, in in uh, similarly what i talked about uh, given when then where you can have multiple uh, you know after a given when then you could have another when then following like this especially for uh, you know the journey user journey tests you could also express the tests as uh, you know as the logic as uh, independent uh, tests and uh, use the stepwise annotation so tests are executed uh, in the order test one test two test three in this case uh, all the tests are passing now if i make uh, one of the tests fail uh, of the second one uh, you know i'm uh, making it fail so what happens is that uh, second one assertion failed so the third uh, test was uh, you know ignored or skipped and it did not execute because this is a you know journey test so if something fails uh, there is uh, no point in uh, proceeding and uh, again you you would not use a lot of these patterns in your unit test but if you are using uh, end to end tests uh, you know writing uh, tests against a uh, ui uh, predominantly if you are uh, you know you could also make use of a tool called jeb along with uh, spark so in those test cases, I think it's a very common pattern to use uh, stepwise and uh, this approach. Next, most, uh, I mean, the, one of the most important uh, part uh, when you're doing unit test, maybe mocking. Uh, let's uh, take an example. In this case, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I have a class called uh, talk popularity service which is uh, you know which will let me know if a talk uh, is popular or uh, not but a simple logic if uh, greater than 100 uh, people uh, are uh, you know watching the talk then it is uh, popular otherwise it's not popular so for that i need uh, to know how many people are uh, you know uh, attending the talk or you know watching the talk 
so I have uh, you know audience uh, count surveys, which uh, is the dependency of uh, talk popularity service. So now for uh, testing this, obviously we can't really wait. Uh, if, you, if you check a popular conference, uh, all the talks may be uh, quite uh, crowded. So in that case, uh, you may not get a chance to test uh, the other conditions. So obviously we would uh, end up with some sort of uh, you know mocking. Uh, so this is how uh, we could achieve that. Uh, you know, I want to mock uh, audience uh, count service I, with the mock call I do that. Uh, then I have uh, two test cases, uh, one for uh, you know uh, popular, another one uh, not popular. Uh, so you would see that uh, you know we're able to uh, supply the the mock one, and uh, and what I did is uh, you know the invocation right, the last uh, one star audience count service. That means uh, we are preserving that. Indeed, the call was made to you know audience count service exactly once by passing uh, this talk. Uh, you know, value as the argument, and in that case, uh, the mock uh, you know will return uh, 200. Since it returns 200, it's uh, greater than 100. It's going to be you know true. And uh, similarly, there is a case, the second uh, test case. Uh, you would see that uh, it is going to tell that the talk is not uh, popular. Again, what what we saw here is that we did not require uh, any additional uh, tool, and that's why coming to the fourth point. Uh, you know, out of four rules of uh, simple design, with the fewest elements, we are able to achieve that. That way, you know, it, that's how it. Uh, it. I mean, that's how Spock achieves uh, simplicity compared to you know other uh, frameworks. The next uh, point also is a practically very very important point. Uh, now we have Spock two, but uh, during the you know. Uh, Spock 1.x days, uh, wherein uh, JUnit 4 was uh, more popular. What would happen is uh, people would have ha would have started uh, writing their tests using uh, JUnit JUnit 4 those days, and uh, then say they discover uh, Spock. Okay, why not we try Spock? Now, can I run all my previous uh, you know JUnit 4 tests along with the newer uh, uh, Spock tests? Is uh, an important question that uh, you know I would encounter encounter and uh, fortunately you know that that was uh, working really well where in the newer tests we could write in Spock and while we continue to write uh, older uh, JVD test uh, yeah so there is a uh, reference to a sample project which has uh, both of these uh, several years old though interestingly the way this works is because uh, the older uh, the Spock 1.x uh, extends uh, the JUnit 4 uh, you know runner and uh, that's how interestingly you know with the same run you are able to run uh, both of these so i think uh, that that was a very very creative idea though that may look like a very common thing when we come to you know uh, junit uh, 5. so j along with the junit 5 uh, i mean uh, let me give a quick overview uh, if you're not aware of that uh, you know it, it uh, separates the whole uh, api part uh, from the engine part so JUnit provides uh, an engine interface which uh, you know any any framework uh, can implement and uh, typically it will have the two parts uh, discovery phase uh, to phase actually discovery phase as well as the execution phase in both of these cases uh, you know the JUnit platform will hand over to the engine and ask okay now discover all the tests you know Right. So, uh, you know, uh, Spock can discover its own test, uh, Jupyter can discover its own test, and uh, if you have a Cucumber test, uh, it, it's based on, you know, the feature files, uh, not really the Java classes. So it can discover that, all these things. Once it is done, you, you can apply a bunch of uh, post-processing filters, uh, you know, which, 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 which you can write uh, as uh, common to multiple uh, test engines, uh, improving your productivity and, uh, you know, uh, ability to use multiple uh, types of tests uh, together, like uh, you know feature file tests uh, along with the uh, Spock tests or uh, uh, you know Jupyter tests, and uh, yeah, the way this works is because uh, now with the Spock two, Spock engine is uh, you know JUnit uh, engine, uh, and uh, interestingly, it also you know it it uh, extends from the hierarchical test engine that uh, Jupyter also uses, which uh, comes with a bunch of uh, uh, advantages like uh, you know out of the box uh, support to run parallel tests uh, etc 
uh, yeah, that, that's uh, kind of uh, additional benefit by extending these. Yeah, the topic in itself uh, can be fairly detailed. Uh, I see that, uh, you know, the unit five has uh, evolved well, especially the execution, the engine, that part has evolved well, but uh, at least the, you know, from the discovery phase, I think uh, there is a good amount of uh, scope for uh, further amount, especially like, you know, uh, having, uh, I see that in the new 1.8 version uh, of the you know, platform, uh, there are options like when discovery, you can have certain listeners and, uh, you know, get captured some data of what tests are being discovered and, uh, you know, maybe you want to capture that, report them or do, do something on that kind of thing. The next point uh, is uh, kind of uh, how uh, Spock provides uh, shared annotation. Let's see the importance of that. So let's uh, start with the JUnit. Uh, test, I have a uh, sample test which uh, makes use of uh, another class, say that uh, stores uh, some service. In this case, I'm, I just have a constructor to know that uh, what's happening there. In this case, uh, say test uh, one, uh, I want to make use of that, which might change the state. And uh, test two, also I want to make use of that, but I don't want uh, any side effects uh, caused by any other uh, test to impact a uh, test one to impact uh, test two. So usually what uh, people would uh, end up doing is, uh, you know, uh, writing something like this, right? Uh, so write a setup for, okay, so before each, you create a new instance of the state uh, holder. Uh, uh, and interestingly, I mean, technically there is uh, no problem here, but, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, just because, uh, uh, what, what what really happens is, uh, you know, JUnit itself uh, creates a new instance of your test case for uh, each of the test cases. This is happening uh, from the beginning. Uh, but people think that uh, same instance is used for running uh, multiple test cases, which, which, which was true for, uh, you know, a bunch of other uh, test cases, uh, test frameworks like NUnit and uh, so. Now, uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, you would uh, see that, uh, you know, let, let's just uh, go back once. Uh, that that idea is uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, I mean, not cause a lot of problems, but, uh, you know, the real challenge is uh, when you move, when you want to share, right? That's when the real challenge of uh, that uh, knowledge gap uh, coming into picture. Now here, uh, I mean, I'm still using the JUnit 5. So, you know, when I try to create, uh, say, I think that I just put uh, one before all and just, just create an instance there. But then, uh, you know, you end up uh, getting uh, this message. Uh, you know, now you get it at runtime uh, because of, uh, you know, that uh, test instance can be configured uh, in either ways, either like one test instance for all the test cases or uh, like uh, create, uh, you know, new instance for each uh, test cases, which, which used to be the default uh, behavior of uh, JUnit earlier. So before you would have got uh, much error uh, much uh, earlier. Now, okay, I made it uh, static and uh, indeed uh, I see that, uh, you know, uh, actual, uh, actual uh, instance is the uh, same. You could uh, make out that from the, you know, hash code. So looking at, uh, I, I mean, so now again, the question comes is, uh, I think I have seen a bunch of uh, blogs talking about uh, why you are uh, forcing, uh, you know, this to be static, uh, like I just want, uh, you know, it to be the single instance everywhere. Uh, and interestingly, uh, you know, uh, when I worked with uh, many teams, uh, not many people were aware of uh, the fact that, uh, you know, JUnit by default creates a new instance for running uh, each of uh, those uh, tests. And interestingly, during my interaction with uh, several other, uh, uh, you know, popular, more, uh, I mean, great programmers also, sometimes uh, people weren't aware of that. Uh, interestingly, I, I mean, the way I came to know about that was because uh, during my college time, uh, I got interested in uh, design patterns and I wanted uh, some good open source uh, code base, which has uh, some design patterns implemented. Uh, and I started looking at uh, JUnit code base and uh, I happened to figure out that happens here. So I think, uh, you know, that was a kind of uh, 
blessings in uh, disguise. So even though I, at that moment I hadn't uh, used JUnit a lot. So now uh, the way Spark simplifies that is uh, you know by uh, providing the uh, at shared uh, in shared annotation. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, you know static here. So you just uh, you know create a new instance. So in this case, which uh, will be shared, and you would see that the same instance uh, was supplied to both the test cases. Or you could use uh, the setup uh, spec method uh, if you want to perform some setup uh, code there. Now, the final and you know the most important uh, reason why you would use uh, Spock. What do you think is that? Yeah, it says uh, built-in mocking. Yeah, built-in mocking we already talked about. Well, without further uh, delay, let's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's groovy, right? Writing uh, groovy is uh, really fun and, uh, you know, it, it makes us really, really productive. So, you know, uh, with Spock, you write groovy code that, that makes it, uh, you know, one of the best things. And uh, yeah, the code base uh, is available uh, here. Uh, you know, most of the code, what I have, uh, showed you is uh, available so those were uh, some points uh, at a high level and uh, yeah if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask let me quickly go through these so Ren is saying uh, yeah the fun fact is uh, power asserts was invented by the spark framework authors okay that is that was something i i mean not, i was not aware of that thanks for letting us know that okay Leonard is saying, uh, yeah, Spock 2 and roll isn't uh, anymore. Okay, thanks for letting me know that. I'll give it a try. Yes, Jupyter tests also can be written in Ruby, but just for, uh, you know, to make it Java, usually when I talk to people, they are uh, uh, usually in Java. So I think that kind of gives a uh, you know, good uh, difference uh, for them. Thank you, Narasha. Thank you. Hope uh, you had a good time. And uh, yeah, thank you.